Good morning. This is Tuesday, November 19th, and this is Morning Prayer from St. John's Anglican Church in Southampton, Pennsylvania, and I'm Father Jay. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. And I apologize if we have a more austere look to our um, morning <laughs> prayer. We uh, we lost the um, ceiling light in our dining room. So our we, overhead light is gone. So we only have the, the two soft boxes that we use to augment. So it looks a little bit like German expressionist morning prayer, but <laughs> here we are. It's going to be that way the rest of the week. Uh, we do have a saintly commemoration today. Hilda. Oh, Hilda. Hilda. Hilda, the abbess of Whitby. Um very instrumental in the Christianization of England. So um, that date, the date that she died, meant that she was born in the early 600s, which means she was coming up in the generation just after Augustine of Canterbury. Mm. Very big name in the Christianization of England. And so he had he's known as the apostle to, to England. He had started spreading the gospel like wildfire. And Hilda was born into a royal family, um, Her dad died when she was very young. She was raised in her uncle, the king's house. And she was influenced by the burgeoning Christianity um, and really took to it. And so when she grew up, um, instead of being married off, second day in a row we have this. Yeah, um, Elizabeth of Hungary. she, She became the abbess of an abbey. Um, which is a monastery that surrounds a, a farm and a series of businesses that sort of formed the religious and cultural and commerce center of the town or towns that it was in. And she was instrumental in spreading the gospel, kind of picking up the mantle in the next generation after, um, after Augustine. She wasn't necessarily an evangelist, but what she was was just a steady presence of the missional work of God's people into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so today is her day. And when you said Augustine of Canterbury, that that is not the same Augustine as City of God. Right. As um, That's Augustine of Hippo. Right. Augustine of Canterbury was was sent from the Roman Empire to England, to Mm -hmm. Mercia, um, to spread the gospel. And boy, did he. It absolutely took off. And so the uh, earlier Augustine, Augustine of Hippo, is what, like three, four hundred years earlier? Um, he was the 300s, 400s? Yeah. 350 to 450, yeah. something like that. So, different Augustine. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we We have have erred and and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have have offended offended against your holy laws. We have have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Jubilate, together. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and And his his truth endures endures from generation generation to generation. generation. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. The psalm for today is Psalm 50, 
you are getting a preview of um, the first Sunday of Advent, which is not this coming week, but the week after that, because that's the psalm appointed for that day. And I know because I've started working on the sermon for I it. was just about to say. <laughs> the Lord, even the most mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Out of Zion, perfect in her beauty, has God shone forth in glory. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. There shall go before him a consuming fire, and a mighty tempest shall be stirred up round about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth beneath that he may judge his people. Gather my faithful together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, <coughs> for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I myself will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God, even your God. I will not rebuke you because of your sacrifices or for your burnt offerings, because they are always before me. I will take no bull calf out of your house, nor he goats out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, and so are the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air, and the wild beasts of the field are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is therein. Do you think that I will eat the flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in time of trouble, so will I hear you and you shall praise me. Oh, calling, is, is he saying, if you call upon me in time of trouble, I will hear you. I will hear you. And you shall pray. It's it's almost it. It's almost like the our call to him, acknowledging to him, acknowledging him as the one who needs to help us, is praise to his ears. Hmm. You're up. I'm sorry. Verse sixteen. But to the ungodly, God says. Why do you recite my laws and take my covenant in your mouth? Though you hate to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you agreed with him, and you have taken part with adulterers. You have let your mouth speak wickedness, and with your tongue you have set forth deceit. You sat and spoke against your brother, yes, and have slandered your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I held my tongue, and you thought wickedly that I am such a one as yourself. But I will reprove you and set before you things that you have done. Oh, consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you to pieces, and there will be none left to deliver you. Whoever offers me a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright will I show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Interesting thing in that psalm is that you know, God loves the the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Um, often in Scripture, when God when God is addressing the wicked, yeah. it's easy for us to think that it's the nations, those outside the church, the pagans. It's not what's in view here. No, he's he's talking to the faithful covenant people of God mm -hmm. and the people of God who are under His covenant, who are part of Israel. They're within the walls of the church. And yet, they are abandoning God, forsaking his ways, and going after deceitful things. Yeah. The, right. You saw a thief, and you agreed with him. Right. You have taken part with adulterers. And, you know, he says, why do you recite my laws and take my covenant in your mouth? Like, why are you going through the motions mm. of being one of my people, but you don't act like it with any other part of your life? You have done these things... And you thought, you mistakenly thought that I was like that you. That I was like you. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's such a, um, it's a piercing psalm. Mm -hmm. All right, we continue in Judith. Yesterday, um, Judith had made herself up pretty and had gone to Holofernes and had um, basically almost seduced him or at least presented herself. And there was a big feast, and Holofernes drank more wine than he had ever drunk in his life. Mm -hmm. 
So when evening came, his slaves, Holofernes, his slaves quickly withdrew. But Goas closed the tent from outside and shut out the attendants from his master's presence. They went to bed, for they were all weary because the banquet had lasted so long. But Judith was left alone in the tent, with Holofernes stretched out on his bed, for he was dead drunk. Now remember, Holofernes had said, we need to attempt to seduce her tonight, because she would look down on us if we didn't try to sleep with her. And now he's passed out drunk. Yeah. Now Judith had story, told her story ma- checks out. Judith had told her maid to stand outside the bedchamber and to wait for her to come out as she did on the other days, for she said she would be going out for her prayers. She had said the same thing to Pagoas, so everyone went out, and no one, either small or great, was left in the bedchamber. Then Judith, standing beside his bed, said in her heart, O Lord God of all might, look in this hour on the work of my hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. Now, indeed, is the time to help your heritage and to carry out my design to destroy the enemies who have risen up against us. She went up to the bedpost near Holofernes' head and took down his sword that hung there. She came close to his head, took hold of the hair of his head, and said, Give me strength today, O Lord God of Israel. Then she struck his neck twice with all her might and cut off his head. Next, she rolled his body off the bed and pulled down the canopy from the posts. Soon afterwards, she went out and gave Holofernes' head to her maid, who placed it in her food bag. A lucky girl. (laughs) Then the two of them went out together, as they were accustomed to do for prayer, because she had set up this pattern of every night I'm going to go out for prayer. Mm -hmm. They passed through the camp, circled around the valley, and went up the mountain to Bethulia and came to its gates. From a distance, Judith called out to the sentries at the gates, Open! Open the gate! God, our God, is with us, still showing his power in Israel and his strength against our enemies, as he has done today. When the people of her town heard her voice, they hurried down to the town gate and summoned the elders of the town. They all ran together, both small and great, for it seemed unbelievable that she had returned. They opened the gate and welcomed her. Then they lit a fire to give light and gathered around them. And she said to them with a loud voice, Praise God, O praise him. Praise God who has not withdrawn his mercy from the house of Israel, but has destroyed our enemies by my hand this very night. Then she pulled the head out of the bag and showed it to them and said, See here, the head of Holofernes, the commander of the Assyrian army. And here is the canopy beneath which he lay in his drunken stupor. The Lord has struck him down by the hand of a woman. As the Lord lives, who has protected me in the way I went, I swear that it was my face that seduced him to his destruction, and that he committed no sin with me to defile. Oh, that it was my face that seduced him to his destruction, and that he committed no sin with me to defile or shame me. All the people were greatly astonished. They bowed down and worshipped God and said with one accord, Blessed are you, our God, who have this day humiliated the enemies of your people. Then Uzziah said to her, O daughter, you are blessed by the Most High God above all other women on earth. And blessed be the Lord God who created the heavens and the earth and who has guided you to cut off the head of the leader of our enemies. Your praise will never depart from the hearts of those who remember the power of God. May God grant this to be a perpetual honor to you. And may he reward you with blessings because you risked your own life when our nation was brought brought low and you averted our ruin walking in the straight path before our God. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. Here ends the reading. The image of Judith beheading Holofernes Mm -hmm. is one that um, has appeared in art over and over and over again. Mm. Um, I remember as a kid, I would always see it in like books of paintings, which was one of my favorite things to look at. And I would... I would see it over and I was like, Judith, don't know her. Holofern, hol, <laughs> you know, and sure. later, I, and I was like, and so I kept waiting for this story to show up in my Bible. It never showed up. I kept waiting for it to show up in Greek mythology or something because he has sort of like a Greek sounding mm-hmm. name, Holofernes, yeah, yeah. but it didn't show up. And uh, so all these years later, it's, it's like, <laughs> this is it. This is the story. Um, Google Google image search Judith and Holofernes and and put in paintings. There hmm. are some some of the best masters hmm. um, painted this subject. And of course, this this story calls to mind um, 
Jalel, 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 right, Jalel from Judges. Mm -hmm. It also sounds a little bit um, like like Samson before he does the thing to the enemies of God, calling on God at the last moment Mm. to be his strength. I I did like the detail that uh, Judah she she takes the sword, and it took two strokes yeah. for her to to get the head off. Yep. Um, that was a uh, that was very specific and and credible mm-hmm. too. That's right. Benedictus, glory, glory to you, Lord God, God of our fathers. fathers. You, you are, are worthy of praise. praise. Glory, glory to you. Glory to you, you for the radiance of your holy name. name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths, in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Acts chapter 18, starting with verse 1. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome, Claudius being the the emperor. Mm -hmm. And he went to see them, because he was of the same trade, And he stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent from now on. I will go to the Gentiles. And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul believed, hearing Paul believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you, for I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And that was the start of the Corinthian church. It's it's kind of neat to get this account, because mm-hmm. we're... Uh, Jay's preaching, well, not just Jay, right. but, but our church is uh, preaching through 1 Corinthians right now. And, and there we have the uh, church plant story. That's right. But when, <coughs> when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal, saying, This man is persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or vicious crime, O Jews, I would have reason to accept your complaint. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and (laughs) your own law, see to it yourselves. I refuse to be a judge of these things. And he drove them from the tribunal. And they all seized Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of this. After this, Paul stayed many days longer and then took leave of the brothers and set sail for Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila. At Chenchere, at Chenchere, I'll go with Chenchere. Yeah. Yeah. He had cut his hair for he was under a vow. It's an odd detail. Mm -hmm. And they came to Ephesus, and he left them there, but he himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay for a longer period, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. And he set sail from Ephesus. When he had landed at Caesarea, 
he went up and greeted the church and went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from one place to the next through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's quite a little travel log. Yeah, this is one of the traveling chapters. Mm -hmm. Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. I forgot to switch it back again. Lord, have mercy. It's all right. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I think it's good to to read the Lord's Prayer in different translations. I think so too. Yeah, it kind of keeps you from getting stuck in one rhythm. Yeah, it does. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that bringing forth in abundance the fruit of good works, they may be abundantly rewarded when our Savior Jesus Christ comes to restore all things, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, your blessed Son became poor for our sake and chose the cross over the kingdoms of this world. Deliver us from an inordinate love of worldly things that we, inspired by the devotion of your servant Hilda, may seek you with singleness of heart, behold your glory by faith, and attain to the riches of your everlasting kingdom, where we shall be united with our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll have a time of, of prayer and we encourage you to do the same, lifting up to God all of your intercessions and prayers and praises and thanksgivings call upon him in time of need and he will answer and you will praise him.
If that wasn't enough time, just pause the video until you're ready. But let's conclude then with the general thanksgiving. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be, <coughs> be honor, honor and, and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much for joining us, everyone. See you tomorrow.